What we do during religious diversity journeys is take 25 students per school district on religious immersion experiences to different houses of worship throughout Metro Detroit. They visit a church, a synagogue, a mosque, a Hindu temple, a Sikh Gurdwara, and we have a summation activity either at the Detroit Institute of Arts or the Holocaust Memorial Center. The kids really get a chance to have a safe place to go to learn about different faith traditions, where they can ask questions, they can feel comfortable interacting with faith leaders, where community volunteers are there cooking their lunch, where students their age from different faiths are present to interact with them. It's a really comfortable, fun environment for kids to develop a better understanding about different religions that they might not know much about or that they might have stereotypes about that need to be addressed. So when I say namahate or namaste, it means I recognize that you are a child of the divine and I have a spark of the divine and I'm honoring that spark of the divine in each of you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum means in English, peace and blessings be upon you. And we say salamu alaikum when we say hello, we say salamu alaikum when we say goodbye. So it's a very common greeting in our tradition. 99% of the times in this country, if you see anybody with a turban on his, on his head, he's going to be a Sikh. Hey, the word Jew means those who are grateful. There's a blessing to say before and after nearly everything that we do, so that we don't take life for granted, so we don't take our bodies for granted, so we don't take our relationships for granted. You have people who misrepresent Islam, like Osama bin Laden, like these ISIS people, who've probably never read the Quran. Our religion has been hijacked by these few fools. And by the end of the day, what they come out with is more of this general understanding of, wow, these people might be very different from me in what they believe, but they are just like me in a lot of other ways. Rabbis can be funny. I never knew that. A traditional Jewish wedding, the service is about 15 minutes and the eating is about four or five hours, um, which is perfect. Each school district is responsible for selecting their students. It's all seventh grade students because seventh grade students across the state of Michigan have to learn about world religions. It's a part of the state of Michigan curriculum. This program fits very nicely into that curriculum. As you begin to understand that you are a part of everything and everything's a part of you. So the bindi is worn as a third eye that reminds us to look inward. So this is the call to prayer. It'll echo like church bells throughout the Muslim world and people begin to come to the mosque for their prayers. <laughs> This article of faith is called Kirpan. Kirpan is always used to protect the needy and the helpless people. First, then it is used for the self-defense. We don't encourage or require straight A students. What we really look for are kids that have a genuine curiosity in diversity, kids that want to become your student leaders, diversity club leaders, kids that will have the energy and the enthusiasm to take what they learn back to their buildings and spread it. As much as we can, we try to make this an interactive experience where kids can learn, but also move around. I really want you guys to have a lot of time to explore today, to get out into the museum, to do the scavenger hunt. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Ve'ahavta, Adonai Elohecha, V'cholavah. And so we smell the spices to sort of revive us, to cheer us up, to give us hope. Some of the concerns that we've had when trying to market this program to different school districts is the issue of church and state. Is it okay for us to send our students from a public school into these religious institutions and once they get there, what's going to happen to them? 
I can tell you that we've never had a complaint that there was ever anybody trying to convert any students to any particular faith. It's always educational. It's always about answering questions, being open and honest, and letting kids experience what these different religious institutions are like. And the parents have had phenomenal feedback. They love the program. Anyone can come in at any time and worship whichever deity they choose. And the concept of the deity is that we have a democratic agreement amongst the members of this temple community. So they voted and they picked Lakshmi Narayana as the central deities. I don't really call myself a Buddhist. I kind of say I do Buddhism. Can somebody tell me who the first Christians were? What kind of people? Yes, they were Jewish. For today, I think it will be enough for you to understand that yoga is kind of joining the different layers of our personality and thereby evolve to the state of perfection. If you understand this much today, I think I will have done my job. Is that okay? Do you take Janae to be your faith wife? <laughs> and to bring joy and happiness to, to a world that needs so much of that. My favorite part was the fake wedding because it was very funny and it gave me a chance to see how other people get married. They break glass at the end to show how, um, how the world is still broken, but God like brought the couple together. He kept on talking about like, oh, I like weddings and he kept on saying like the food, the food. It's a really good way to think because even if you're not Jewish, they still accept you no matter like what religion you are. I am a Sikh and we, we had that same concept too. Uh, it's open to everyone. So the feedback is phenomenal. My favorite thing was going to the Hindu temple where, where we danced and we learned a Hindu dance. That was amazing. Yeah, so the question is about Jews believing in Jesus. I'm going to give you two answers to this. India, which is home to Hinduism, is also home to three other religions which were founded there. One is Buddhism, one is Jainism, and one is Sikhism. The stained glass in churches goes back to the Middle Ages. Back in the Middle Ages, the common people didn't read. And so stained glass was developed to have pictures of Bible stories. It is worn on the hand and it reminds us when we are about to do anything wrong, it reminds that you are a sick and you are not supposed to do anything wrong. You are supposed to do the right thing only. Just imagine right now that God sent you as a prophet or a messenger. What kinds of things would you want humanity to know or to do? You guys are going to break up into groups and each group is going to have a spokesperson. So there's a lot of ways that kids are just learning how to connect with people that might look different or eat differently or dress differently than them. Just because a Muslim wears a hijab doesn't mean that we don't watch the same TV program at night at 8 o'clock. Why do the gods have so many names? Well, I'm a mom, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm an employee. If you ask 10 Jewish people what they think of reincarnation, you'll probably get 10 different answers. For Muslims, we abstain from food and water from sunup to sundown. And we do this for 30 days. So during Ramadan, Muslims are very, very charitable. They're giving all the time to help feed the poor. All right, so like we will demonstrate to you how we uh, tie the turban, and uh, we need a volunteer. But when you put those kids into a setting at a religious institution with 100 other people from that same community, that are open and engaged and begging them to ask why questions. It makes kids very comfortable. We welcome all of you here and we hope that you have a wonderful time. My name is Padma. You can ask me anything, so don't feel hesitant. Um, even if I don't have an answer, I will try to find you the answer. Who knows something about the Quran? So there, there's no such thing as a bad question. Uh, we really want to know what you're curious about. And then there's going to be food. That is one of the most important of Jewish traditions. 
Um, I actually have a theory that if you talk more than you eat, it sort of went wrong. Um, I, I love the lunches. Uh. <laughs> We try to have traditional food pertaining to that faith. Obviously some faiths have more traditional food than others, but we try as hard as we can to offer the students the opportunity to taste something a little bit different that they might not get to try at home. So my favorite food was at the mosque and we had the Middle Eastern food. My favorite food was um, at the Hindu temple when we got to try the Hindu dessert with the mangoes chopped up and the different fruits. I forgot that what they were called, but the little potato things. Those were, those were good because I always hear people talking about them and I never had one before. I like the pita bread that they served here and I dipped it in the curry. That tasted pretty good. My favorite food was um, the pizza from the, from the Judaism journey because, you know, everybody likes pizza. Like in Sikhism, they would have everybody as equals and everybody would sit on the ground um, all together. Trying new foods that you like look at and think, ew, that's disgusting, and then you try it and you're like, this is the best food I've ever had in my life. <laughs> I especially like the Middle Eastern food and the Mediterranean food we got from the Jewish faith and the Islam faith. When you find yourself thinking about stuff, simply let go of those thoughts. Return your full awareness to your breathing. At our Sikh journey, we had Sikh martial arts. They were able to see why martial arts is important to the Sikh community, um, the whole idea of the saint soldier. I've never seen a Sikh before. I've never heard of Sikhism before now. Oh, the swords were scary to look at. I wasn't necessarily scared for my life, I was scared for them. Um, but once I found out that the swords weren't like actual real swords that could cut people, I was okay after that. I've never had a congregation turn us away. All of the congregations in Metro Detroit that I have approached have been overwhelmingly excited to host us. And they bring in hordes of volunteers, cooking in the kitchen, cleaning up, helping facilitate group discussions. Several different religious leaders are present and are just anxious to teach because everybody wants people to understand their tradition and their cultures, and this is the perfect opportunity. The reason that people hate each other and the reason that people don't understand each other is because they're afraid, right? So fear leads to misunderstandings and fear leads to hate. So what I really hope is that you guys aren't afraid anymore, that you know you can ask questions, that you can explore other faiths, that it's okay to not know everything. And also that it's okay that we're all different, right? We may believe differently, we may eat differently, we may dress differently, we might worship in very different ways or not at all. But we're all trying to become the best person that we can be, however it is that we think that we should do that, and to work together as a community to better our world. People have come up to us 10 years, 15 years down the road and said, hey, I went through that Journeys program in seventh grade and I remember this and this and this and this and it changed my life. Not a very many kids get the chance to experience what you did and I just hope you find it to be as valuable as I do. I am really excited to see what you guys might do in the future. I had a lot of fun because I got to meet new people and make friends. It was learning but it was still fun and we could hang out with other people. You get to learn more about your religion too. It kind of made my religion like connect with the other religions because I never really learned anything about other people and their religions, so it made me closer with people of different religion and it made me see it differently. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity and it's really interesting learning about other people's cultures. We're all so different yet so similar. Like some of the religions that we learned about like I didn't even know about. You learn so many things that you never knew, so many problems that you never thought could exist, and it's really just mind opening. It's a great experience and I hope more people can share this experience yeah. like we have. If you're watching this, <laughs> to the journey, it's really fun. It's not. Too. I made new friends. I made new friends too. It was, so. it was really fun. <laughs>